Who's the punter turner? <laughs> Who's the punter turner? Why would I want to tell you guys that? Uh, no, we have enough guys that we feel comfortable, so we'll wait till Sunday at 105 or 101, whatever time we kick off in Detroit. Who are the candidates? Uh, like, you know, who, do you, who do you see kind of trying out for that spot? I mean, there's plenty of guys we've had out there from, you know, we've had Quez, we have Kenny, Boston's done it, you know, Avante's been back there ca catching punts. You know, we've got enough guys where we feel comfortable enough where when a push comes to shove and we want to get out there and get some returns, we got enough guys out there. Specific you know who, who is going to return punts today? Uh, and you're not saying it for a competitive advantage, or are you still debating who's going to be the punt return? Do I know? Like, who's yes. going to I'm saying that you made a I know you're not going to tell us. Yeah, well, we'll keep it for, uh, no, you know, for, for the competitive advantage no, for the most part. But in my mind, I know who's going to be out there the first punt return. What are the specific attributes that you're looking for as a punt returner? Like, you know, there's obviously catch the ball, but what other attributes are you looking for in that position? You know, obviously, like you said, catch the ball. But you also want to have the vision and, you know, the feel to get, you know, we like to say get a first down. You know, when, when we say get a first down, getting 10 yards, getting north and south, getting down the field, protecting the ball, making the first guy miss, because there is guys out there, and, you know, in this league, there's gunners out there that run 4-3. that They're going to make some guys miss on the outside, but if they can make the first one miss and we get a next-level block, that 10 yards turns into a 20-yard return. So making the first guy miss, catching the ball, and, all, and um, you know, just giving that extra juice that may, you know, help propel the team to, you know, some momentum swings. How about kick returner? Who are your candidates there? Uh, RE, the first uh, answer, I guess. There's plenty of guys we have out there that we feel comfortable, with, again, um, doing some things like that. But again, for competitive advantage, um, we'll just wait till Sunday uh, when we put that ball on the tee. Kicker? Uh -huh. We'll keep that again as a, as a question for everybody else to find out on at 1 o'clock in Detroit. What do you like about having Burton Covey on the uh, practice squad and what he show you on uh, this summer? Um, you know, there's, a, there's plenty of guys I like on our practice squad. You know, when we have um, enough players out there that, could, you know, they have their name called at any point, really gives you a lot of confidence when you get into game planning. Um, and not just Britain, um, just guys on, you know, other guys on the practice squad that help us get ready for the game. And I know I go to lean on them, you know, just in case something happens all the way up till Sunday, which has happened before where you have to wait for a guy the last minute, but he's ready to go. So it's not just Britain, it's, you know, everybody else on the practice squad that has to be ready to go just in case their name's called. What about Sarah Aaron, Aaron this, this summer that might make you feel more confident in him after some struggles last year? Yeah, you know, I, I, my confidence never wa wavered in Aaron. Um, obviously, we... You know, we've already talked about this enough. You know, he had a bad couple games last year, and, you know, you guys have asked him, and he's talked about it. But him coming back and, you know, having a very good offseason in terms of just working on some things mechanically he's done with, with Tyler Brown as well, then going back, you know, to himself. You know, it's all credit to him getting ready for his second year. And, you know, just like anything else in this league, no one's ever a finished product. You know, it was his first league, first year last year really doing it. Um, he had his ups, he had his downs, just like anybody else in this league. But him coming back, you know, putting his head down, getting ready for this upcoming year um, to help our team, I think he's done a really good job. And, you know, those preseason games, I thought he did a really good job of flipping the field, especially in that Miami game. Um, he was out there and he, he flipped the field for those guys. So we're going to keep that momentum going. And, you know, he has, you know, good rapport with, with, Aaron, with Aaron, with Jake, with Rick. You know, it's not just a, a one-man show out there. Then getting those guys on the outside and the interior to block for him. So it's just keeping that confidence that we've been, uh, we've been striving for all, all, see, all camp. I know we, we probably talked about this last year, but when you go up against fifth, uh, how much, like, is, is there an extra level to sort of the chess match of going up against a guy who, who you know so well and who you know knows you so well? Uh, you know what? It, that's actually a very good question. I wouldn't say there's like an extra incentive towards it, but, you know, all 31 other coordinators, they're at a coordinating spot because they are very good coaches, and we, I respect every, every one of them. Then uh, with FIP, you know, working under him and just how hard he, he game plans and tries to find an extra advantage. So just being able to try and match that and give our guys the same type of uh, energy and the same type of uh, game plan. So when they're going out there, they're confident in doing whatever they're doing out there. And once again, FIP, I mean, you could just look at the stats he's done in the past 
10 years as a coordinator. I mean, I think he has something like 18 total blocks, 12 total touchdowns. Like he, His work is very much something that you strive for regardless of if you work for him or you don't work for him. I mean, he's one of those coordinators that's well-respected um, throughout the league. I was just very fortunate to, to first get into special teams learning under him um, back in – yeah, 14. So just with FIP, you know, you just you just got to be ready for anything. And, and he's done a very good job last year in Detroit. And I just have the utmost respect for him. As you look at the Lions, what, what do you see first? What do they do well on, on special teams? I mean, they, they just like everybody else, they play hard. They're disciplined. Um, they, they have good specialists out there and Jack Fox and, and, and Cybert and everything like that. Then they've got some guys on the outside that can run. So it's going to be a very good test for us come week one. Um, in terms of that, but you know, just just like anybody else, we gotta be ready for everything. You never know what's gonna happen week one, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure we're we're on top of everything and uh, get these guys ready to go. Is it less challenging as a, as a special teams coordinator once you get the 53 man roster in place? Now you can begin to kind of zero in on who's gonna do what job, as opposed to you know maybe training camp or summer when you don't know who the, the guys are gonna be. Uh, in terms of our team, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not too much because you, you, during training camp, you know, in the practices, you really get to see other guys in different spots and what they're most comfortable with. So probably by the after the first week, you kind of understand this is the role this guy is going to have and try to get him as confident as possible in that role um, regarding to if they do make the 53 and to the guys that made the 53, we're, we're ready to go and just want to get out there, come tomorrow and practice and make sure we start off with a, with a, with a good note come uh, practice tomorrow. When you look at your candidates. It's clear whoever it is, it won't be someone who's been a full-time returner in the NFL before, at least on punts. What made you guys confident or comfortable to go into the season that way? You know, it's just, you know, sometimes it's how the cookie crumbles at times, but it's also with the practice habits. You know, there is times out there where you guys see it or don't see it. And, you know, when they're catching the ball off a live, you know, uh, a life leg or off the jugs right there, you know, Aaron Moorhead does a great job when with the returners back there. Say it's a punt day, but he's back there with the returners, you know, coaching them up, getting them confident enough to win with their feet, catching high hands and everything. So it's a, it's a group effort, but once again, it comes down to me making that decision with Howie and Nick and, you know, talking through it. Just, you know, we're trying to have the best 11 out there to give our team the best advantage to win come Sunday. When you look at your kickoff coverage, how do you think it's improved this year as opposed to where it was last year? Yeah, you know, with our kickoff coverage, you know, we just – in terms of improvement, we just we don't want to have the the ebbs and flows where you know, for example, we came out in the New Orleans game and we did a really good job with that. Then say we come out the next week and we give up a big one right there. It's the confidence and the to get consistent coverage down there uh, with our players and you know just working you know the fundamentals. You know a lot of the times when it comes to special teams, yes, you could game plan a lot of it, but a lot of it comes down to the special teams fundamentals. Hey. Let's fall back on this, whether it's a technique here and there to make the returner stop or make them go east and west so everybody could get down there. So it's just, you know, refining those techniques. And that's on, on me to go back and see why there were some leaks in our coverage last year. Well, how can we get better? And that's on me to get these guys going with drills during training camp, during OTAs and stuff like that. But once again, it's all about a mindset when it comes to special teams. When we kick that ball off, and if they want to return it or from nine deep, we got to make sure we're down there to give our defense a long field because in turn, that will give our offense a shorter field right there. What's Blankenship's upside on special teams? With Reed, I mean, he comes in every day, you know, ready to work. He's like, he, he wants to work. He wants to get a lot of information in terms of why they do this on special teams. Why do we do this on special teams? And he's done a great job with it. Um, and just like everybody else on the roster, everything, you know, competition breeds greatness. So he's competing every day with everyone else. And he's done a great job in terms of understanding, because he didn't do a lot of special teams at Middle Tennessee State, but he's done a great job so far, you know, taking command when he's played the PP, um, going down there on kickoff coverage, especially in those joint practices. So it's always cool to see, you know, a young guy keep growing and getting better each day. Same thing, I guess, with N'Kobe Dean, right? He didn't play a lot of special teams at Georgia. How's he adjusted to uh, being on teams? Uh, he's done a great job. I mean, Nicobe's just a very good football player. When you have good football players, they, they'll catch up on things really quick, regardless if they, they played it in college or not. So nicobe has been doing a great job, and he's got a good room to learn from. You know, T.J. Edwards, you know, he came in undrafted free agent. He did a heck of a job um, playing special teams, and he earned his right to play some, some defense. Um, Sean Bradley, 
who's come in as a late round draft, but just getting tidbits here and there from them um, is always going to help Nicobe. And he's, I mean, he's a student of the game. The guy is super smart. So you tell him one thing, he's going to take it to heart every time, and he probably won't make that mistake if he does make a mistake. What's the outlook for Devin Allen as a special teams player? Yeah, I mean, just like everybody else, you know, the, you try to get them ready for whatever it is. And it, kudos to Devin. Um, you know, you take six years off anything, it's going to be a little rusty. But he came in every day, got better every day, made some plays out there when he gave him the opportunity. So it's just him, you know, keeping that confidence going and just, you know, coaching him every day, regardless if he's on practice squad or not, giving him the opportunity that, hey, we get some extra reps after practice regardless if it's a returner or gunner, blocking-wise, something like that. So for Devin to come in, you know, six years out and, you know, having the traits that he has and making a couple plays, it's very exciting to at least keep working with him and try to keep him growing, you know, just the understanding of the whole special teams aspect. Thanks. Thanks.